karaoke maybe we still gotta find this um the mama d'aqua right wasn't that whole thing the weird animals that no one can see and could be right here right now I think we're supposed to talk to the tents, even though we know what they're doing. They're trying to set up the druggies. What's up, man? Hi again. So, uh, how things going? Checked out the church. And what happened? Uh, I talked to the crab man. Oh man, who is he? What did you think? It seemed okay, to be honest. Very spiritual. Gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism. Uh, he's alright. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? It's just. Preaching and praying from the looks of it. He clearly enjoys the physical activity. There's something sinister going on. Just preaching and praying. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah. Lloyd is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Of course he's a problem. Well, he said he didn't have a problem with it. He keeps himself physically active, thinks spiritual thoughts, and doesn't drink. As far as I can tell, he's not going to leave. He'll climb around up there. And guys, she'll never catch him. Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. Yeah. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice friendly hyper time. He's gonna have to live with the crap man, don't worry. I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. It's kind of a cool little feature that the club has some random crap man in the roof that you can sometimes make out. Is welcome to dance till the morning light. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker, the one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? <laughs> Grandma's clothes. I was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Fortress Occident, appeared. A programmer. That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like the Anodic Dance Club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! Mm, she made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? Uh, no. I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. That's me. No, Noid. He's right. 
Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Well, I told you, she literally doesn't. She absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Mm, I am not going to throw her out, but we can try convincing her, yeah? Excellent! Good luck, my friend. Goodbye, officer. Well, what am I going to say? Like, we already knew this. You guys want to make drugs. I said no. And you guys were like, fair enough. We'll just open a club. I talked to Suna. I said they want to open a club. She said no. I come back here. I say, she said no. And they're like, yeah, we'll go ask her again. Okay. What's up, man? I see you're here again. Off sign, man. Stick so I around the back low. Into the church without. Yes. A sticker. You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants you to describe it, though he already knows what it looks like. Hmm. I could show it. It's on my ledger. Why describe it when you know already know? That would be bad. We're trying to. Just show it. That's got to be the move. Oh, wow. Right on your cop ledger. You like it? Super stupid. <laughs> I'd like to learn more about it. You're right. It's the harbinger of a new era. What would you like to know? Mm, what's it supposed to be? The dead guy smiling. I got that, but why? He defeated history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. I'm thinking maybe the smiling dead guy is a symbol for communism. It's also dead but doesn't care. Are we really gonna bring up communism? Well, let's do it. Yeah, that interpretation holds. Thank you. That's great. Good, good thing I was worried about saying that. What makes a sticker so modern? I ah. guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? A sticker. Interesting. Oh, wow. Right on your... You're right. It's the harbinger of... Simplicity was brought to us by a classical solarist modernism. But that was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. Seems awesome. My head's spinning. You come up with this stuff by yourself? Not alone. Many people are thinking the same thing right now. There's a gathering at the Palisium. The beat is the same for all. Simplicity. What if I the sticker, not? The club. It is. 
<laughs> she great. Well, I guess one could uh, write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? Are the signs? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. Where? You heard me. The large headed youth has closed his eye. Incremental progress! Yeah! I can't be bothered right now. Sorry. Hello again. Hey, I saw the crab man. He's surreal, and you're right. And, um. Um. Doop, 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 doop. Sure. Contact Mike. Hi. Okay. So what? Go back to the church and say they want to open a club? And Suna will say, I know, you told me that. And you'll be like, well, yeah, but... But you know. Hello, they still want to open a club. Yes, what is it? What if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre. He wants to make it work. Okay, well, I guess that's okay. I mean, that, that is something new. I'm not going to force you. I don't want to make anything work. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Okay. Good. Wow. 92. Research not going well. Discovered fortress acid oh, acid. I can't even get higher than ninety two, can I? Except for a hundred. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen about your research. You mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Maybe I can help you with something. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to a the boom boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. I would not call this grandma. Grandma clothes, but whatever. All right. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. I am so glad I didn't sell it. Um, I guess I could ask first and then show it. Eh, who cares? Do you mean this? No. That's the production schedule you stole and accessed without authorization. I don't need it. Right. In his defense, it was simply lying in the desk drawer of an abandoned cubicle. Okay, but still. What is an off-site copy and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. But it isn't the one I have. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. By your old workspace, do you mean the studio of Fortress Arcedan in the doomed commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Well, I've been there. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. In the giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. I it's know. impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy. But 
You've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... I... found a note from the Ice Bear fridge. It said the off-site copy had been moved to a safer place. Wait, a note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? It said the off-site copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Sulishlav. Jarisa, of course. Our project lead, Sulishlav Jarisa. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. That feature creep and the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. What? And the heads. I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Valley of a thousand heads. You like the sound of that. Ah, uh, you see, I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. This solution. But she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Why can't you go? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Why would she think that? Because she's from Martinez. And people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. Uh, it's a bit biased, don't you think? Yeah, people in Martinez don't really like to get with the times. Don't be too harsh. That's only because of their socio economic situation <laughs> what if it does uh, well they'll be too harsh I guess yes but she literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my aim city I'm not making this up the lieutenant coughs like he's amused yeah but we believe it once I came in one morning only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. Right, well, at least this quest is clear and I might actually be able to do something in this game. Um, of course, I won't go there yet. I might have a little look around before heading back and now I can sleep for free. So maybe I will stay on this side of this place. The church side. See what I can find. And then sleep for free. It's, don't know if that matters, but I'll do it. Why not? Gotta try it at least once. And then... And then... And then the next day we can go back to that side thanks you're welcome and here's my pulse of multi tool you might need it to hack loose some ice it opens everything if you get me the offside copy then you can keep the pulse on. and you just gave me the solution to do this it hurts a bit for her to say this she's not too happy to be parting with the caval soon Yes? Another. Thanks. Hmm. The. Equip this to open locked containers. Equip this to open locked containers. What in the wow whoa 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 I thought it was like a little bottle opener so what the whoa, man that's gotta be heavy a pry bar plus two if you will yeah no 
No diggity. Damn, man, what are people gonna think walking around with that thing? You're gonna build some strength. Alright, I guess we uh, just, just run around a little bit here and there, see what's up. Firstly, we'll try. We'll try here. We check that. Bunger. Bunger, bunger, bunger. Give me money. This barrel has been recently discarded. Fuel oil. The chain trails off into the ocean. Who knows? To who knows where? These rusty gears used to turn a whole machine. Let's go in. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot at the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. Hmm. Three percent. It cannot be retried. Interfacing. I doubt we'll ever do that, but that's something to work towards, I guess. Enter, 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 facing, 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 facing. Machines, pick locks and pockets. Pick pockets, huh? If you say so. Can we go in further? Gosh darn. Cigarette butts cleaned away under a rock brand. <laughs> Take a mental note. Shimizurami seems important somehow. I'm sure it does. Nothing here. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. The ladder seems too rusty to climb. This relay tower coordinates boat traffic into the bay. Barely. Minus two. But it is scented. That might be a good thing. If you're ever, like, going on a date or something. Not a bad look. Obviously, we, we, we like, uh... Yes. Tiny inlets there. Off in the far distance. Yeah. Nothing down here. Nothing down there. Oh, what is that? The boardwalk rises to the south. It casts its long shadow over you. Yes. I know, right? 
shirt and money new shirt hmm same thing go here no we cannot go in there why are we here just to suffer and the map not particularly helpful round and round round and round we go all right well i guess that's all dead end you know i'll let you find your way Thank you. Bottle is broken. Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Call who? You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Did you say inoperable? But the machine is... Or you said the machine is operable. Okay. Um... Random number. Calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? No. End of tone. Someone picks up. Here? Is that you, Pierre? It... No, this is not Pierre. Do you have any news about Pierre? Damn, that's dark. Uh, no. Sure you do. No one has anything nowadays. You're either a salesman or a statistician of some kind. I am not interested in cooperating. I'm not a salesman. I was just calling a random number. Uh, yes, I'm a salesman. I don't know who I am, but I am a police officer. To hell with the police. To hell with you. Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. To hell with you. You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. Twenty-four oh three. That's a different number. Ah, oh, once more. Calling, still calling again. Sir, someone with a masculine voice picks up. Go on. Hello, Gerard speaking. <laughs> Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, your electricity. Okay. What a douche name. Change it. <laughs> Is electricity there? I need to speak with electricity, please. No. But I got a feeling Al kick your ass is gonna make an appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. That was great. I uh, don't know if we should keep doing that. Uh, maybe we'll be back. If by popular demand or something. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Touch it. The cloth, if you can still call it that, makes a soft crunching sound as you thrust your finger into it. Weird. The cloth, the cloth, the cloth, the cloth. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. 
It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. I think this is a jacket. The idiot doom spiral guy wanted me to find. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to have it returned. Yeah, well. Um. Damn. Gross. At least we cannot wear it. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. God, how did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy towel. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Yeah, think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. What's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. It's pretty disgusting. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Ah, well. I figured that would end badly, but it's all right. Makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. Ah, let's just check this first before we go there. Eh? Postcard. Another one. Somebody's gonna want postcards at some point, huh? Or maybe they're just for selling. A coin of a rated weighing machine hasn't been used for a decade. Vikers have recently painted a tarp red. This one has hell written on its back. Revachon. Um, encyclopedia. The make you smarter, less perceptive, but smarter. We'll go with it for now. And that's all we got here. So good thing I quickly check that before going here. Big wine canister. It's open and empty. I'm sure you were here last night, huh? Ha ha ha. Oh. The smell. It's awful and familiar. That is awful. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. D oh. What the hell? I... Okay. Yeah, death is uh, not a good smell. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Yeah, well, I think I see it. What about my yellow check mark? Anyway, I'm just gonna ignore you for a little bit. You're the main event. 
Coin operate. Yeah, it's been out of service. Great. Good to know. There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some pills in the bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads Shish Kebab Revachon. Makes me hungry. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. All right, well, I think we have to. Oh. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits in his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Did he fall on his head? Like hit his head on the bench and maybe. The smell is not as bad as a two week old corpse. But it's definitely heading there. Hold on. The lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Yeah. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. Hmm. Look around first. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Drunk man slipped and fell and hit his head and died. Examine the man's head. A dry chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Hmm. Nope. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. Yeah. Plastic bag. I prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. Yeah. True. It feels disrespectful. Chewing gum? Rabowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. 
In a ditch, off a road below the 881, he thinks. A young father. Then he shakes his head to make the memory stop. I think I just realized. Damn. Wow. The lady in front of the bookstore. We accused her husband of being missing. And she said, why would you say that my husband is not missing? I could have made it a mission, couldn't I? To investigate the missing husband. I think we found the missing husband. Who wasn't missing. But now it seems might have been missing is also a bit dead the entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back well, it doesn't have to be her husband but come on the game the game is setting that up study the man himself the man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. He was confused when he died, confused and alone most likely, overcome with the awful surprise of it all. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. That's what the chewing gum seems to point to as well. Yeah. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Yeah. Uh, pockets. He finds some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Hmm. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this what to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? This is an omen. A sign from above. Don't start drinking again. He looks like me. I could have ended up just like him. Dead on some empty boardwalk with a bottle next to my corpse. Well, at least you're not married. Uh, we don't know. Or, what if you are? Yeah. But let's try to not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happened? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Probably drunk, huh? Oh, yes. Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. The kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Yeah. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Hell yeah. Uh, could it be related? I mean, come on. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. 
For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and relate it to the murder case. Yeah, agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. Someone should be held responsible. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still a question of identifying the body. Well, the card. What do we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. What about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. Isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have much time or resources to spare. The guys at processing will take care of the rest. Yeah. Well, uh... We should take the case, man. We do everything we can in this game, I guess. Not like it's not already long enough. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. I, I... Yeah, another solved case. Guy slipped. We already solved it. I mean, probably. Of course, there could be more to it. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Hmm. The backside? If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial zero zero five zero two five five two one one or visit us at Moreau Street seventy eight Jamrock. Business hours nine hundred to eighteen hundred. Got it. We're gonna have to call tomorrow. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Uh huh. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some Long thrillers too. Fi. Stay hydrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I'm gonna need some food and some coffee soon. But yeah, don't wanna fall and hit your head on a bench and die. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to send to Sam 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 Sam. There's some tear. Moonshine, probably. Moonshine. Alright, well. I guess that's all we can do here. We're gone. Where do we go? What? Oh, buzz hum. The electricity flows through the wires. Sure does. Bob. 
bars cover these long, dusty windows. It's a kid. You guys don't want to go over there. Money. Another power box. The fence blocks the path. Health. My, oh my. It's a lot of money. Don't worry, Mike, Mike, Mikhail, Michael. You'll learn about it all about it. About and Mikhail it. noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. With what? A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the village. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kituragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Kim? Nice to meet you. Uh, hyper what? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Hello, hello, uh, windows? Oh, yes. So, Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. But you and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. You've heard of Kim, of course. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat. Yeah. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into verbs lately. Verbs. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant verbs when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. This is the glasses. The glasses got me this one, huh? Uh, what's so fascinating about an empty old building? Do you have money? <laughs> this goes straight to money. Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. Go on. He I keep yawning. I'm sorry. Um, he raises his hand to his eyes. Springtime sun warming his face, some handsome face, not face, some hand, some. And all four of you turn to admire the mural before you. What not a lot of people know is this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Ink cartridges. The scam itself. Hold on. What's R&D? Um, look at the building. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. R&D? Apologies. It's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. 
You're probably more familiar with RTD, Research and Technological Development. Mayor Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. Oh, I, but, okay, my glasses. I don't think I've ever heard of this felt electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. <laughs> um... Most the ace. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. What? Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Yes. Which is a feat of engineering, even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam haven't achieved yet. Indeed. What? The revolution! Yes. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building. Or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. Hmm. You're saying the Felt Electrical built this boardwalk? What happened to that? Well, I guess we probably do all these, huh? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. Oh no. A pleasure wheel? Huh. <laughs> you would want to know about that, huh? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Amen. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it fell the right. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. What happened to the engineers? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What'd you call me? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to Revachol on her political concept album, Bon Bessier d'un You should read it. Every local library in Revachol stocks a copy of the decree. Oh. Um, I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. Exquisite. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womti Domti Dom Center in Vredeport, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins, Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... 
trying to a uh, wumpty dumpty dum in the red fort which in danish would be the angry fort of course red we would pronounce as fred because we're danish and we also we're always puking you know fred fred if you're angry you are fred fred fucking stupid word wait did he just say wumpty dumpty dum sent him? <laughs> yeah that's that's me that's my reaction speed too yeah. he did it he said Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. Oh man, you speak. You 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 speak for me, man. You understand me. I caught me off guard too. I thought I was just a little kid. What the hell is a Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center, and who the hell are Keith and Guy Juiced? It's used, I think. Um, <laughs> man, even even the voice was about a laugh there. A wumpty dumpty dum center. Um, the the wumpty dumpty dum center. Paul Ackerman, Keith and Guy used. What are you talking about? The wumpty dumpty dum center for contemporary arts. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ackerman, chose to... Come on. There's no place called the Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center. You're making this up. Turn to the Lieutenant Kim. Is he making this up? <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Redeport and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Wait. The uh, felt playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience, but those are incorrect. Oh, experiment. Experience, okay. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. Anyway. But of course, what else? Um. Sure, what's on your mind? But of course. Sure, what? But of course, what else? You look like someone who has money. It's a weird thing to ask. Could lead to something. I don't know. I never know with this game, but still a weird thing to ask. Um, thank you, I guess. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikaela here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Why, why do you know Kim? Who, who, why, who are you, Kim? Why? Look at Harriet Dubois here. He's confused, man. What's going on? Man, I never get to put any points into this. Because I want to learn about the Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center. How could I not do that? How's, uh... How's this... I still got 18 hours left. Yeah. That's a... 
That's a crazy one. You gotta do at least the big ones. Three hours, one hour. This is just a tiny little one, but it's the Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center. I gotta know about the Wumpty Dumpty Dom Center. Anyway. Um. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D, a slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Hmm, hmm, he hmm, he, walks away, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow the never came. From a strong gust of wind, they're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for forty years. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No, I won't even try. You know, I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Hmm. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk. Can you still shoot though? Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. Hell oh, yeah. It's probably better than that dude right now. Man, where are we? We can go this way and that way. Dip day, but ap day. Shoopity boobity. Goopa loopa. Bit of money. No boat in the boathouse today. In the in the in the this section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Here's some morale and some cool glasses. If we ever go on that date, now we got our glasses too. Because. Okay, they're massive. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, we eh. We gotta go here. It's probably a dead end. Oh, hello. Oh, you must be the guys. Oh, maybe we'll save that for next time. Then maybe we'll have a look over here. It is getting late, of course, but. Shoddily constructed. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Money. I love money. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Damn. Now look, him even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. What do you mean, even more? Hmm. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez sense. Grim affairs. It's, uh... What's that called? When you line the people up and, uh... Yeah. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Visual 
calculus. I swear one of these. Like that. Visual calculus. Huh. Anything else that can give me some visual? That'll give minus one. We're not gonna put that on. A scattering bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, which is from one corner to the other. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. Yeah. There are many of them, a dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, no sound, no movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. Firing squad. A single person stands on the side. That's the one. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round where only one soldier has the loaded rifle looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed a host of men probably in everyday clothes ragged from the conflict and covered in dust they were not sitting a common practice for executions in some nations as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes they stand facing the wall it's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. Who are they? Comrades, the forsaken, the wretched, who tried to rise against the horrors of the world. Soldiers? Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side. But from which one? Six guys, seven soldiers. Somebody's getting shot twice. Men of duty. Dark duty. You fuck that. Murderers. Twisted by orders. Young boys forced into killing. Yeah, messed up. Damn. Person giving the orders. The commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Yeah, well, hard to tell. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Veld? What if it was uh, the Feld personnel when they're assets were being seized by the revolutionaries another likely scenario yeah. or maybe you mentioned coalition forces could it have been them against the wall yeah it's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here they were always the last ones against the wall hmm to be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. Goodbye. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Damn. Well, we did that. And 
we're just about reached the time. The sign says entry and Tartit. An old ticket tacker booth. People pay money to park here? You gotta run around. Money in a tear, which is also money. Tear, tear. And oh, there is more. Oh. I was just clicking for fun. Money, money, money. The door is not only barred shut, it's inaccessible. What is that? Was this four ahead? Oh my. Oh me, oh my. Plus two logic. Sure. Hey man, it fits. Can we go here? This is it, huh? This is all that's here? Good. I like dead ends so that I can conclude this area and not think about it ever again. Um. And there's no going there. Okay. So, the people. The husband of that old lady, Lena. Lena, Lena, Luna, Lana. Tiny cages, carefully constructed. Trying to catch the papa bak bak bakadakwa. Mama, mama dakwa. All right, we're done. Somehow, it's been how long's it been? An hour and twenty. Oh my god. Somehow, see, it feels like twenty minutes, but it's been an hour more. Sometimes that happens at work, and it's the greatest thing ever. When you do a little bit of stuff, you feel like it's been twenty minutes. You look at the time, it's been an hour and 20 minutes. And oh my god, you're happy. Recently I tried, it was like, it was a driver, right? Normally the drivers show up around 4 a.m. This driver showed up at like 2.50. And I was like, what time is it? Why is he here already? Oh, it's 2.50. And Zai. Uh, it's a really nice guy, actually. He's always like, good morning, good morning, good morning, hey, good morning. Nice guy. Anyway, I, uh, I, I work a little bit, and then more drivers show up. I'm like, wait, why are these guys showing up? It was 2.50, and it's been like 20 minutes or something. It'll be like a little bit past three now. Why are these guys showing up already? I look at the time, it's past 4, it's like 4.10. I didn't even, I, I didn't even see it being 3 a.m. I don't think I ever at work just skip an hour and don't see, don't, don't look at the time at all during that hour. Like, that was a good day. It was a fine week, got through it quickly. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Disco Elysium. Hopefully I'll get to do at least one more. I said that last week and I didn't. But hopefully I'll get at least one more done. I also got some videos I need to edit. God, I hope I get some of that done too. For now. Take care. And I'll see you in... Ugh, hiccups. Ugh. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Okay, bye. Ugh, I need food. Damn.